the Arctic igloo, proverbial home of the Eskimo. Today, for the armed forces, it can be a practical field shelter in the Arctic. North of the tree line, on the polar ice cap, or in the mountains. Shelters like these are no match for the hazards of gale winds and violent blizzards encountered in the Arctic. But the igloo takes conditions like these in its stride. With the igloo a structure of increasing concern in Arctic warfare research, three men of the 1st Arctic Test Detachment set out on a demonstration of the simple steps involved in building this serviceable and tactically desirable snow house. Only a particular kind of snow, wind-driven and of uniform consistency, can be used for igloos. And if it is unavailable, it's useless to build one. Knife tests reveal whether or not the drift is of the hard-packed consistency that is the only kind suitable for building an igloo. This snow is eminently suitable. So a rectangle is traced and the snow chopped up to make digging possible. A snowshoe takes the place of a shovel. With more elaborate equipment, work can be speeded up. But three men using merely this equipment can build one of these far north shelters in about three hours. With a two-foot pit scooped out, the most delicate operation of Operation Igloo gets underway. Cutting the blocks of snow requires care and patience. In spite of the solid texture of hard-packed Arctic snow, the blocks will crack if too great pressure is applied. For best results, the block should be about five inches thick, 30 by 17 inches. An ordinary carpenter's wood saw is ideal for cutting, but even the more tiring knife method works well enough. At the end of the pit, a little trench is cut to make it easy to cut the block from underneath. Then the block is freed at the top. According to their size and the density of the snow, blocks weigh anywhere from 35 to 50 pounds. Careful handling is always a number one consideration. Though the blocks are remarkably strong, they may break when held in certain positions and jerk suddenly. Blocks are trimmed down into symmetrical slabs to aid in solid construction. There's a common misconception that igloos are made of ice. Nothing to it. Sometimes the going gets a little rugged. On occasions like this, a derrick wouldn't be unwelcome. But you don't often find derricks wandering around loose in this part of the country. While one of the men continues to trim the slabs cut by the man in the pit, our third man finds another spot to cut out still more blocks and thus speed up the construction job. Days are short in the Arctic, no daylight to waste. Back at the main site of operations, work has moved ahead. The pit from which the blocks come will later serve as the interior of the completed igloo. A T-shaped cellar begins to emerge. Now, with a circle traced in the snow as a guide to the igloo shape, the first two blocks are worked into position. The entire construction of an igloo is based on the principle of the Roman arch. Blocks are trimmed so that they fit against each other at an angle. 
one block leans against another so that they give each other support. Chinks are filled in with soft snow. But this must be done gently because the wall won't be firm and solid until the whole dome is complete. With the first row completed, a new technique comes into play. Several feet from where the igloo's door is to be, several blocks are sliced down diagonally, creating a triangular shaped niche. Note the short, choppy strokes of the blade. The blocks to be fitted in for the second tier thus rise in a spiral. As in the case of each succeeding tier, the blocks lean in more sharply than in the case of the one below. If you ever go in for building an igloo, never place the blocks seam on seam. Lay them the way a bricklayer does. There's no change in method from here on. And if the blocks are carefully set and the snow is of passable quality, there'll be no trouble with a cave-in. Now the igloo is three-fourths completed, and this is the time for cutting the door, which resembles, like the doors of most igloos, the entrance to an oversized doghouse. Entering an igloo in a walking position is not recommended. Inside, one of the men adjusts the blocks that will complete the dome. The cottage is nearly ready now for putting out the welcome mat. Now the last block goes on. The belief that water is poured over igloos has no basis in fact. The self-insulating qualities of the snow take care of everything for snow inherently keeps out the cold and holds in warmth. Final touches. In a little less than three hours, a country place of their own. The cost of materials, just like the weather, is zero. It's not only a first-rate and comfortable shelter, but a shelter that will still be here the next morning. Unlike a tent, no gale winds or blizzards can move it from its present location. Blending with the landscape, it's self-camouflaging, and it can be left behind for others without abandoning government equipment. One of the men leaves a block outside, which, if necessary, serves as a door. But with the door open and a small hole cut in the dome, ventilation and temperature inside can be regulated. Just three knives and three hours work. Know a faster way to build a house? And with the place inhabited, it soon warms up even with the door open. There's plenty of light too. The dome of snow resembles a huge cluster of diamonds with each facet reflecting light. A candle after dark creates plenty of illumination. Already, it's begun to warm up. Our igloo builders are ready for rest, and it's ready for them. They're set for a warm and comfortable sleep, come blizzards, winds, or a sub-zero thermometer. Next morning, everyone's blood is still circulating, and the igloo has fused overnight into a surprisingly solid unit capable of supporting a great deal of weight. For the benefit of skeptics, the men give proof positive of just how much an igloo can take. With today's emphasis on the polar regions, the art of constructing an igloo may be a very good thing to know if you ever find yourself in the Arctic. Safe, sturdy, and strong, the Arctic igloo very definitely holds its own.